Hello everyone, Dan of 14th Prime here, bringing you this video review of the Hot Toys Iron Patriot Movie Masterpiece Series Diecast figure from the Iron Man 3 movie. Here you've got a shot of the box, you can see some nice artwork here, really a beautiful box, kind of almost red, white, and blue, let's say, but this is more of a silver. Uh, but you got the Iron Patriot up there in print. Side of the box there, just kind of the extension of the artwork, which is cool. It says Iron Patriot there, you know, one six scale collectible figure, got his numbering. Flip around to the back, and you've got the folks involved in designing the figure and bringing it to life as usual, kind of the credits, if you will. On the side there, again, you get more of the extended artwork with the fist and the Iron Patriot. And bring it back in. Again, there's the front, Hot Toys logo, movie masterpiece, diecast. So that's the box, really a nice piece of packaging. Opens up pretty cool. This just kind of slides off. Nice little sturdy cardboard. It seems to have some plastic lining around it. And you got this base here uh, with this very durable kind of styrofoam inside. So that all just slides out, again a, ne a nice heavy cardboard base, and then this just pulls off here. Iron page it there, sort of embossed into the styrofoam. And then here you have figure, wanting to jump out of the box and his many, many accessories, which we'll take a look at. Don't forget to figure out there, down in the bottom, there is a, a tray kind of wedged down into the bottom of the styrofoam. So that just pulls out here. Maybe. So that was fitting down there. Got instructions which we'll need. And basically, just the base and, and batteries. Okay, guys, so here's everything that is the Iron Patriot out of the box. Just a quick overview of course, you got the figure there up front, stand put together in the back, um, and his various accessories here, which is basically two pairs of hands kind of a straight palm saluting hand. Extra head with Don there inside. Um, his big machine gun that goes on the back. A little form machine gun that can clip onto his left arm. And then a couple masks here that go with uh, the portrait headpiece. Uh, one prop up on his head and one covers his face. So let's take a closer look at these and then we'll get into the figure. So I have the pieces laid out here so you can see them. Again, there you can see the, the five hands, the big gun, uh, the little form gun, the head scope, and the masks. So on the left here, you've got basically a pair of molded fists, um, just kind of stationary, no repulsor on the inside. But basically identical, just kind of fighting fist accessories. Pretty straightforward, those guys. Next to that, you've got the open palms. So these have the repulsor lights in them. So it's kind of, you know, the classic Iron Man, open palm, blasting sort of pose that you'd use on the hands. And they look nice. So you can see a nice black trim in between kind of the knuckles in terms of how the joints would be and how the glove would work. So nice detailing in there. Backhand armor looks good. It's got a little bit of, of wear there. It's kind of a theme on the figure. It's got this little light scratching types of effects um, that shows some wear on the armor. But overall really kind of a nice shiny bright red paint. 
And then finally, this hand here is basically, I think would be your saluting hand, right? It's kind of the crisp fingers together, thumb in, kind of like this, it looks like the stop hand. Uh, but when you put that up to his head, it's going to be basically a, you know, salute sort of hand. And it also has the LED repulsor in there. Here's an accessory for his, I believe, left arm instruction set. Basically, it just kind of, this armor serves as a battery cover um, for some of the LEDs, which we'll look at. Uh, and you can basically replace that cover with this piece just plugs in there and it's got a little bit of a machine gun on it there it says danger down there on the bottom again really sharp kind of nice nice balance of bright paint on these things so the figure really pops and you'll see that with you know a bright kind of you know, this cherry red almost and the silver um, but some nice kind of wear effects to it too and little detailings like that danger really nice and cool here you have the big gun all right so this is going to go on its back and there's many my hands in a way many mounting positions for this thing but this is basically what the iron patriot aka the war machine is often recognized for in his in his iron man armor it's it's just the big gun there's some Packing there still the big gun on his back so a lot of posability to it there and I believe here too yeah as well so we'll see that once we get it on the figure but again nice detail you know, this is danger in there around the gun which is pretty cool some yellow accents here again kind of like hazard signs around the gun really small really nice molding and detailing on the big gun and finally here we've got the portrait head sculpt with Don in there this bottom piece articulates so you can get the full chin if you want to we'll just zoom in here and you can see I mean Hot Toys just just such a nice job with with head sculpts and Looks so realistic, really good job. I think the eyes is always kind of a standout feature with these guys. Just seem to do that better than anyone else. So really sharp looking head sculpt here. Side of the helmet. Is the back through the top. So there's two masks. They do look the same, but they just position differently. So you can see this one's basically the full mask. So it just snaps right on there with magnets, stays on. So you can cover up Don and have him be in the suit. Then the other mask is for propping up on his head. So you can kind of position it probably in a few different positions on top of his head there, but it's meant to just kind of be propped up, of course. So he's looking out. A little bit difficult to keep it even, but I think you can get it pretty close to looking nice and level. Okay. So that's kind of the accessories again. So here you have the stand. I think it's, you know, it's nice. It works. Uh, proper theme, right? Sort of Iron Man mechanical base here we'll look at. Uh, but it says basically Iron Man 3 there on the bottom. Got Iron Man 3, Iron Patriot on the nameplate of the base. When you look at the base of the stand. You know, it's got basically some foot pedals, I guess, uh, kind of for where he would be like holding the suit at the feet. It does take three AAA batteries, so it lights up, which I don't think is going to show up probably too well 
like a switch on the bottom here. So that's probably showing that about as, about as best I'll be able to get it. You can see, lights off and with the lights on. And just in terms of holding the figure in there, you know, nothing special. He just kind of sits on there and you'd line him up with his clamp. But it does look pretty cool and has the, the right theme, so it definitely all goes together. All right, now let's take a closer look at the Iron Patriot. So here he is squared back up with you. Red, white, and silver paint, really sharp looking. Let's zoom in closer and paint up and down the figure so you can get a closer look. So here, let's start at the bottom of the figure here, down at the feet. We'll just paint our way up. Here you can see some of these ankling armor, how it's layered over the foot. That really helps support uh, a great look with the armor when you articulate the ankle and the foot. As we move up here, you can see some of the red trim around the shin, uh, which wraps around the back, which we'll see soon. You get into some silver paint here up around the thighs. Nice detailing there in the thigh, across the knees. It's got a double jointed knee. Painting up through kind of the midsection here. Uh, really like the kind of red and silver across the stomach. You can see the gauntlets, the foreign armor looks really nice with the red trim there. You get the Air Force logo on the left arm. Come up through the chest. There you've got the um, arc reactor with the star paint around it. Uh, really nice work in the arms there within the elbows. Up through the biceps with the red paint. Come up across the shoulders. He's got these shoulder guards there. And he's got some uh, detailing there. Um, FF, you can see 445. And this section of the figure just really sharp, really looks nice when you got the stomach, the biceps and arms, the arc reactor with the accents of the star and around the shoulders all coming together. Just a great looking figure. And there up top you got the, the helmet. So if we turn this guy around here from the back view, that's where the red trim around the front of the shin really comes around and expands across the calf. Looks really nice. You got the, uh, the back of the knee here with some nice detailing, kind of a flexible sort of look to it. The heel here has some articulation to it as well, uh, similar to the front, which helps with the, uh, the movement of the feet. I will say, I wish the ankles were a little tighter because this guy's very top heavy, the die cast is heavy, and sometimes he starts to do this Michael Jackson smooth criminal thing where he starts to lean forward and start to just fall forward. So some tightness in the ankles would help that. It makes me a little nervous to kind of leave him and pose him thinking he's going to face plant. Um, so you got to watch that if you're standing him without, without the stand, of course. So painted up here, we get into the back side of the figure. Again, just some nice blue paint. There you can see how the waist wraps around to the back. So they pull that detail in around the back, which looks nice. The back of the arms really sharp there with kind of the gauntlets and the weaponry there uh, with the sharp red accents. Another Air Force tat there on the back of the right arm. Some more detailing on the back of the left shoulder with the 002. Uh, you can see where his gun goes there in that slot. You can mount that in many positions through there, which is pretty cool. Here you got up through the back and uh, behind that center panel there is actually where you put some batteries that um, power the arc reactor in the front. So it's a nice, a nice die cast panel that covers a battery panel that you can get into uh, to light up the chest. Same thing with the arms. Behind each arm you've got some panels there. They're not as well hidden but they're very discreet. Uh, just put a screwdriver in there, pop them off and batteries go in there and they power the LEDs on the palms for both the left and right hand. 
So let's go up the left side of the figure here, and now you can really start to see how the front and back that has showed you come together, which is nice. So here in the bottom of the foot, you've got some, some nice red trim, which is kind of, kind of sharp, nice detailing there. You can see how that front of the shin wraps around to the back of the calf and expands with the red there. That looks nice. You've got some silver trim uh, down on the calf there. Uh, there's the, the red spot on the foot, like I mentioned, which is a nice accent. Panning up. Again, you've got those silver accents on the thighs of the side here. So let me kind of move the arm out of the way so you can see. You got the Air Force tat kind of there on the uh, on the hip plate again. Move up a little bit more. You can see how just that midsection comes together. Uh, these flaps all kind of articulate and help the legs move around on both the sides and and the front of the figure as well. So you can see kind of up through the midsection and top of the chest with the arm out of the way and there's the side of the arm too um, which looks really nice. You can see how that red just splashes around. The silver kind of weaves in and out and just really nice paint job, really nice detailing and accents. Up on the shoulder you've got this armor piece which again articulates but it's it's pretty snug up there and they do have some warnings and in instructions about paint wear depending on how you move that arm so it's something to just be careful of and then there you got the top of the head and some of the side detailing if we turn the guy around just for the sake of completeness we'll take you up the right hand side and again it's it's very consistent with what you just saw on the left hand side those silver accents, the kind of Air Force markings on the hip, some very fine detailing there across the suit. Again, arm pretty consistent on both sides as well. So let me just give you a, a close up of the, the head sculpt here. This is the LED head. You can see it gets full range articulation of course so I'll just kind of spin it around here and you can just check out the head uh, and the paint job here you got the back of the head the left side there and you can see similar to the body on the head they've got this nice little wear effect that they put on here and there and the LEDs the batteries for it just go right off this top panel just pop that off underneath there another battery panel drop in some batteries and that's what will power the eyes uh, with the LED lighting which is very cool and I'll show you that in a moment let me show you a close-up of his articulated hands that come on the figure so you have a five finger articulation here and you've got all the joints in play so you can see the fingers here uh, the wrist rotates all the way around and has good movement there. You see the LED in the center. On the thumb here, you've got your two joints on kind of the knuckle and connecting to the palm there. And the main reason you have those extra hands, you might wonder why you need them if you have fully articulated hands here. But these hands can't actually make a full fist. Here you can see this is about as tight in as I can get the fingers to make a fist so it's just not a good fighting fist it looks like it could maybe be a gripping fist maybe hold something but in terms of a closed fist to fight you can't get it all the way there I don't know why they couldn't engineer it to do that maybe uh, maybe obviously it must have something to do with the LED that just makes it so they can't get that closed up all the way because remember the the fist hands they took the LEDs off and then also, just in terms of the spacing of the fingers, you can't get them any narrower than this. So when you think about the saluting hand, um, again, you need that separate because these fingers have this gapped spacing, even when they're flat out there, that you can't kind of get them all lined up nice and tight for a salute. So the hands are really nice, but they do have some limitations, and that's why they included the spares uh, that we looked at earlier. Here I have him with the all his LEDs on. 
So please excuse the uninspiring pose, but I'm trying to just get them in a spot where you can see the eyes light up, arc reactor there on the chest lit up, and then each palm. Those are each all kind of separate batteries, separate switches, which they do a really nice job hiding again in the back, top of the head, and kind of like underneath panels on the arms, different panels to find the switches. So it looks pretty good. You get pretty good light out of them. Obviously, you know, chest and eyes are brightest and the hands you get a little bit less, but still noticeable uh, and looks good. I'll give just a couple articulation points on the figure. Obviously, to get the figure, read through the instructions, right? Um, but they do a nice job, right? I mean, it's Hot Toys. It's an expensive piece. Um, so they compensate for some things that kind of the armor and the, and the die cast otherwise would make it uh, limited for. Uh, so obviously around the feet, as I mentioned, they've got all these kind of paneling effect to help with all the kind of articulation that you would need out of the ankle. Um, the foot also kind of pulls down if you need a little bit of extra range of motion. Uh, similar with the legs, you know, as it is kind of the upward movement. It's really restricted, but similar to a lot of Hot Toys pieces. You know, there's a button right here on his lower spine and just push that and the legs just kind of, it's right there on his butt, sorry. The legs just basically drop, drop down almost automatically from the weight and it frees up some range of motion. So you basically can't get the leg out like, you know, 90 degrees. I don't want to screw with this. Um, and there, that just kind of drops back in. And when you hold the button down and just stand them naturally, it kind of slides back in. Shoulders, you know, this panel gets in the way when you try to go lateral. I don't really like to do it. You get a lot of touching of parts there. So that's really where I think you got to watch paint wear and it's advised in the instructions. But, you know, if you want to go out 90 degrees, you can pull down on the arm. Just kind of open up another range of motion and there you can get it. But again, these pieces get really tight, tightly together. So I'm not a fan of putting that kind of pressure on the figure. Oh, what else? Oh yeah, in and out of the abdomen here. You know, you can get uh, basically two extra clicks, you know, if you pull them up and that opens up some of this range of motion there and that just goes back down. So that's some of the things you can do just to compensate for posing and range of motion if you want to do something a little bit more uh, dynamic with this guy. So there he is, guys, the Hot Toys Iron Patriot your patriotic war machine, really sharp figure, right? I mean, I think just a beautiful, beautiful paint job on the Iron Man suit and armor. Um, Got to be one of the sharpest looking figures out there that you can get. So that's the Iron Patriot. Hope you liked the video, guys. Hope it was helpful. And we'll see you next time.